In this video, we're gonna build a real catnap animatronic that actually breathes fog. We're Jamie and Jay, and we bring your favorite monsters to life, like this eight foot tall Huggy Wuggy, and this real life spring trap from FNAF. Today, the challenge is to build this animatronic completely from scratch, which is not easy. Catnap is the main boss in Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, and it's to, well, just look, just look at it. Also, you know, a couple of you asked us to make this project, so here we go. First though, we need a plan. We're gonna start by using some PVC pipes to build a skeleton and then giving it a really cool pose. Next, we'll figure out all the animatronics like the motors, the fog, and the glowing eyes. And we'll cover the whole thing in purple fur. Finally, we'll build his insanely creepy head. And also this thing is like huge, it's, it's very big. <laughs> it's gonna be great. We're using one inch PVC because it's rigid enough to hold them all together, but also a little bit flexible, which we're gonna try to use to our advantage. To connect all these pieces, we're gonna use regular PVC connectors, but we're also gonna use these custom PVC joints that we developed. These give us a lot more angles for like elbow positions and stuff like that. They're 3D printable, they're super easy to make, and if you wanna make your own, you can find the files on our Patreon. All right, do we have all of our pieces? I hope so, there's a lot. There's four legs, there's a spine, a head and stuff, so there's like a million pieces. Let's just start building. And at the bottom, one of these, and that is a flange that gets attached to the ground. Go like this. All right, our spine is gonna be like two parallel lines because that's gonna keep it from twisting, give it a little more strength, and it's gonna bend in the center because spines do that on cats. <laughs> All good? No, no, something's not. Here. Bing. Okay. Look at that, our very own cat Bing. spine. Bingy spine. So this is the shoulders and down there is gonna be the hips. So the legs are gonna attach right here, but to attach them, we're gonna use these rotating PVC joints that we made. And if you wanna see exactly how to make these, check out our pirate skeleton animatronic. Basically, they're gonna go in here like this, except they're too small. <laughs> so we made these adapters that go on there like that, one on each side. And now I can put this right in there. And if we pretend that this is the shoulder at the top of the leg, we can put that in there. And now the leg can rotate. I think we gotta move the table. It's good. Yeah, this thing's gonna be big and it's, it's not gonna fit up here. That's, I hope that's enough space. It's like our whole garage. All right. These are his feet. So we gotta. Okay. We're missing a piece. Oh. This is a beautiful pose. All right, you got it? Yes. All right, just sit tight for a second. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> There's no easy way to do it. Okay, I went around and I tightened up all of the different joints and I bolted his feet to the ground and I added some little screws on the rotating things here to make sure that they don't come out. And now everything is nice and tight and watch this. We've got this really nice rotation in the back here. So the next step is we're gonna put a motor here and we're gonna actually make it look like this whole thing is moving. So this is a wiper motor. It's the same type of thing we used on Huggy, except this time, I designed a mount for it so we can actually mount the motor directly to the PVC. You mean instead of our lovely hack job of uh, hose clamps and plywood? <laughs> we've learned a lot since then. I think we've gotten better. So on our shaft here at the end, I've got these rod end bearings, which are like these little things that rotate. And we discovered these when we did our Mickey animatronic. So we're kind of combining a bunch of stuff we've learned recently into one. So I want the focus of the movement to be the head and the breathing of the fog, but I also, I don't want the whole body to look like it's just a statue, right? I want to create essentially like an idle animation. So with this in place, hopefully this should kind of rise and fall a little bit and the flexibility of the PVC should work. Let's try this. It's doing it, it's working. Woo! I was expecting it to like break into pieces and fall apart. Kind of flabbergasted. That's so cool. Yeah, I love this. This is so cool. I think when you're animating things, subtlety like this is key, right? Like if you ever played a video game when all the characters are just kind of standing still, they're not statues, right? They're kind of just like milling around a little bit. So it's like recreating that on a big thing. I'm working on making like the interior frame of the body. Now we learned the hard way that you have to keep fur really far away from any mechanical stuff because if you don't, bad things happen. So what I'm gonna do is try and build like a rib cage type thing and then we're gonna cover that in foam and then our fur. 
Okay, the rings are on. For now, I wanna do a motion test and make sure nothing like collides into itself. Yeah, that seems like a good it's idea. It's a little close down here. <laughs> It literally is like that close to it. Is it? <laughs> yes. Is that good or bad? I mean, it clears it. I mean, technically it's fine, right? It's technically fine as long as it doesn't move. Catnap breathes out this red fog called poppy gas and it's a sleeping gas. So we're gonna try to recreate that with a fog machine. <laughs> but I'm trying to decide if we're gonna use a big normal size fog machine or something smaller like this. And uh, oh, and by the way, you can't make red fog. That's not really a thing. So instead we're gonna use a red LED in the mouth and kind of do something like that. Well, if we have the big one, like where are you gonna put it? It's just gonna be like next to him? Yeah, that's why I don't like using these because you'd have to have it like away and then run a hose maybe up its leg or something or we could put this like you know kind of underneath the zipper and then run a hose out to the mouth look at this this there's more there's more more stuff i gave him a butt a bu <laughs> do cats have butts yes like, cats have well butts. i mean yes okay yeah that's I a also, nice cat butt <laughs> i also gave him like this cage around the rings and I think that's gonna give him some more stability there. Holds everything together, yeah. okay. I was gonna cover this in foam, but I think that might add up too much bulk. So instead, I think I'm gonna cover it in tape and then add stuff on top of that. Before you do that though, I think I decided that I wanna use this microfogger thing. So I made this mount, but so this is gonna go on here like that. And then it's gonna live like down here. And then there'll be a, a, a hose that comes up into the mouth. What you got going here? Some fuzzy stuff. Unlike Huggy Wuggy, Catnap actually has pretty short fur. This one is not the right color. This one is like way too long, but the color's at least closer. You could shave it maybe. Like, you know, when you shave a cat, except our cat doesn't have any fur. <laughs> so we don't shave him, but you know what I mean? Like, you cut it. You know what I could do? I could make him a purple fuzzy jacket. Make him a jacket? Yeah. I mean, he seems to like the fur, so. <laughs> I'll yes. be right back. <laughs> We realized there was too big of a gap here and we didn't need it to be that big. So we added some extra wires, got it taped up, and now it's looking nice and shapely and round and catnap-like. We still need access to all the stuff up here. So on the chest, we left it open, but on the back, it's really close to that motor. So we made this protective flappy thing that we can tape and untape when we need to access it. One of Catnap's creepiest features is how skinny and kind of almost like starved looking he looks. So we're gonna try to create some ribs and like a, you know, some bones that'll stick out from under the fur. We're gonna try and use pool noodles for this. They're light and they're flexible and they're pretty easy to shape. He's got, he's got vertebrae now. It's like a dinosaur or something. <laughs> He's got a rib cage now. You put some foam on there? Good job, perfect. <sighs> These <laughs> legs took a whole day longer than we thought they were going they to. They look so good though. Like it's simple, you wrap a leg and then you put some bumps on it. But no, no, the duct tape came off because fun fact, duct tape doesn't stick to foam. So we wrapped and salvaged what we could, and then we glued the rest, and then we just duct tape bubble wrap to make his like leg bumps. This part is finally done, and we can move on to the next step. I think it was great. High five. Thanks. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's too big. It's so big. Oh. Okay, to be fair, we're gonna carve at least half of this away. My worry is that, how am I gonna sculpt this? Yeah, but you say that every time. And what happens? What happens every time? It's funny that we're worried about two completely different things. <laughs> so we have a front view and a top view and a side view. And we're gonna tape these on here, trace them, and then carve away everything that is outside of those lines. This doesn't include the ears, does it? No. It's even bigger than this? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> To cut the foam, I'm gonna use these tools from Hot Wire Foam Factory. They cut through really nicely. So if you're interested in these, there's a link in the description.
We're done. Look, it's cat out. Yay! <laughs> this is hard. This is a huge block of foam and trying to make it look like anything is, it's slow going and hard. <laughs> This ended up being really challenging. I kept telling her it looked great, but at this point it had been almost three days of sculpting and Jamie was ready to throw this thing out the window. I brought you a donut. Thank you. I'm so stressed about this head right now and I know it's probably gonna be fine, but that doesn't stop anxiety. One thing that's been surprisingly helpful to ease the stress of this project has been journaling. And to do that, we've been using a free app called Day One Journal, who's the sponsor of today's video. We've been journaling every single day of the build. What we did that day, what our goals are for the next day, what went wrong or right. Because sometimes you work an entire day, hours and hours and hours, and then it feels like you've accomplished absolutely nothing. With the journaling, we can actually look back at it each day and see that like, hey, we actually did a lot, even though it doesn't always feel like it. Day One Journal has been the perfect app for this. I'm new to journaling, but the app makes it totally painless to get started. There's built-in templates, there's daily writing prompts if you need inspiration, and everything is private with end-to-end -end encryption. It also has great premium features, so we can add photos and videos from each day, drawings, and it has a cool voice-to-text transcription so we can talk through what happened instead of typing it. If you want to try Day One Journal today, go to dayoneapp.com slash wickedmakers and use the code wickedmakers to unlock a limited time offer of a two-month free trial of Day One Premium. Again, that's D a y o n e app.com slash wicked makers and use our code for two free months of premium. It's totally worth it. Whether it's for your stress relief or you just want to, you know, chronicle your adventures, go give it a try. And now back to this giant head. Wait, eat your donut first. Oh, right. <laughs> One eternity later. Are you kidding me? Come on. I told you, <laughs> didn't I tell? This is incredible. You turned a giant six pound block of foam into this. So good, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Next up, we're gonna do his little nose. So I glued some EVA foam together and I'm gonna carve it and it'll go right there. And then we're also gonna do some ears. What are you up to? Oh, I spent the last few days trying to figure out how to make his head move and where to put all of this stuff. <laughs> so far on all the animatronics we've made from scratch, something always breaks or falls apart. And I'm trying to fix that. We've got this big servo and this is gonna be his neck and it's gonna allow the head to move back and forth. And the next problem I have to solve is how to actually attach the giant, giant head to this. Because if you just stick a pipe into the back of his head, it's just gonna fall off, so we'll see. I don't know. This cat has huge feet. So the first thing I did was I made a tinfoil foot and it's got a hole because it's gonna slide over the ankle. He's gonna have giant claws coming out the end of his toes, but first I'm gonna cover this all in foam clay. Did you run out of white clay? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> The foam clay is cool, but it takes forever to dry. So we've just got to let these sit for a few days. So the feet are dry and it's time to make the claws, but I'm now realizing I probably should have made the claws first and sculpted them actually into the toes. We're going to make the claws now and then somehow figure out a way to join them together. So this is Sculpey and I'm going to use it for the claws because we can bake it and it'll be dry in like 15 minutes or cured, not dried. That's what we learned. Pro tip, don't use like a skin colored clay for non-skin things. It's just weird. <laughs> I did a quick test with epoxy clay to bridge the gap there. And I think something like this is gonna work. Okay, these giant mutant cat feet are mostly done. They have to dry overnight and then tomorrow we'll paint them. Made a box. You sure did. <laughs> so it's got some holes in it. So the wires can come through the neck and go into the head. And then it's got like this thing inside that this attaches to, the servo. Uh -huh. And then look, servo rotates and bingo, problem solved. So are you just gonna like glue that box to the back of his head? No. Jamie was not excited about me cutting a huge hole into the back of this, but it all worked. That wasn't too bad. Bingo. Nice. Should we try it on? See if it holds up? I'm still worried that it's too heavy. Yes. To our box. There we go. It's a good one. Like stay. Oh. 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 That doesn't. Well, the box worked, but the whole thing started to collapse. 
we fixed it. Again. <laughs> we had to spread the legs out more and they need to be in a very particular angle because the pose is so dynamic, doesn't balance otherwise, but it works. And look, we can even push on it. <sighs> you know what though? I hate to say it, but it's real big. I know, I think it's too big. I took off a whole lot of material and I don't even know if you can tell, but there's a lot gone from this. And here's the truth. I could work on this for like three more days and probably still not be happy with it. But at some point you have to call it and it has to be done because we have to move on. <laughs> To add to the stress even more, we had to figure out how to drill holes from the eyes and mouth all the way back to where the box is for the wires and the fog hose. To glue in the box, we used expanding spray foam so that we could position it exactly where we wanted and then the foam will fill in all the gaps. So you can see that this expanding foam expanded and filled up all these gaps and now we have to actually cut away all this extra stuff. Let's see if this works now. <laughs> All right, I'm really nervous. Me too. <laughs> I feel like Dr. Frankenstein, I'm gonna plug this in and a monster will awaken. <laughs> and nothing. It's on. Oh, I forgot to plug the motor in. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. So far, so good. Yeah. Seems okay? Yes. Yeah? It's not even like stressing that much. There's no creaking. At some point we're pushing PVC to like its limits, but I don't think we're there yet. It's time to put in the control box, but I wanna show you guys what's in it before it gets tucked away forever. The whole thing is powered by an Arduino, which is basically a mini computer. Next to it is a relay, which lets the Arduino control the wiper motor and turn it on and off. Over here is the power, which is 12 volts, and then this is the power for the wiper motor that goes out to it, and then this right here is a wire harness, which controls everything else. Finally, on the outside, we have a speed controller, which lets me make quick changes to how fast it moves, and there's a USB port, so if I wanna add or update stuff, I can use that. It was definitely hard to figure out how to customize all this and fit it into this nice compact box, but I'm really proud of this. It's a far cry from our usual, you know, mess of wires and stuff everywhere. There we go. <laughs> we made cat nap. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna kill me. He probably is. He's like, get me out of this thing. <laughs> oh, you don't like your fuzzy jacket. We finally get to start putting fur on this cat. So this is the fabric we chose, and uh, there's a couple problems I'm anticipating though. One, this stuff does not stretch, but the body does stretch. You, you know, the back opens up and so does the stomach, so I'm gonna have to solve that somehow. And then the other problem is because it's so short, it doesn't really hide things like seams. So we're gonna have to be really careful about, you know, where the fur joins to itself. All right, Catnap's eyes and mouth are black, but not just any black will do. When you look into his eyes, I want it to be like you're staring into an endless void of darkness. The black is black. So we got a couple things to try for the first time. This is the blackest paint in the world. It's called Musso Black. And from the same company, we got the blackest fabric ever. It's, it's like a black hole looking it's into like this fabric. It's like things just disappear into it. <laughs> for the eyes, we already base coated them with a little bit of black tinted Mod Podge, so we're gonna Put some of the blackest black paint on and see how it goes. Oh, look at this. What I really love is that it's matte. You can't see any of the edges in there. It's just flat and smooth. I was gonna use this fabric for the mouth, but the paint also looks amazing. And I think the fabric, it would be a little bit of a pain in the butt to kind of get this to sit flat. And the paint was so easy to use. Look at this. It's so cool. I love this stuff. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you're trying to make something like the blackest of the black, this is it. It's so cool. Are we ready to put fur on the rest of them? We are ready. How's it going? It's good. How's it going over there? You got the feet painted? I think we have a problem. Don't be mad. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> I spray painted them uh -huh. and this part is totally fine, but the claws, I painted like four hours ago and they're still sticky. What? Which means the paint isn't drying, which means something bad happened. Oh no. 
Okay, according to our Discord, you should never use spray paint on polymer clay because there is like a terrible chemical reaction that happens. It's never gonna dry? Never. It's gonna be sticky forever? Yes. How do we clean it off? We can try acetone. We have that. Okay. Okay, took a bunch off. Is it sticky? I think that's okay. So you're gonna remove <laughs> all of that paint? <sighs> ah. So I'm cutting off the places where my fabric joins together, but it leaves a little bit of a gap. To fix that, I'm using what's called a Muppet stitch. And that's a stitch that like hides the thread and joins the furry fabric together like seamlessly. It's called the Muppet stitch? It is, they use it on like Muppets. <laughs> and there we go, mostly invisible seams. That's crazy, yeah. I mean, I thought there's gonna be like big wrinkles all over it, but there's like literally none. We 3D printed Catnap's moon, and this is what hangs off of his zipper pull. We could just paint it gold like it is in the game, but I have always wanted a reason to gold leaf something, and it seems like super extravagant and ridiculous, but only the best for our boy. I don't even know what gold leafing is. Well, it's like super thin pieces of gold, or in this case, it's not real gold, but sometimes it's real gold, and you glue it on, and now it's gold. <laughs> It took me several hours, but I got all of the, the bad paint off of the nails, and now I got this cool metallic paint, we're gonna paint them. In some ways, building Catnap has gone really well. We've learned so much since we started making animatronics that we were able to combine it all into this insanely awesome build. But at the same time, this project has been the hardest thing we've ever done. The longest hours, the most setbacks, difficulty at every step. I guess that's what it's all about, though. You just gotta keep challenging yourself and pushing beyond because that's how you get better. To animate Catnap's head, I'm using a huge servo because the head is really heavy and we need a lot of torque. A servo is different than a wiper motor because I can tell it exactly how to move. To do that, I'm using this free software called Botango, which is used to animate animatronics. Instead of writing code, I can just animate in a timeline. It's super fun. Anytime I want, I can just make a new animation for Catnap and then when it's ready, we export it to the Arduino. Y'all, we just did a test run. I can't wait for you to see him in action. But before we do, we just want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel and helping us grow. You guys are the best. Until next time, stay wicked.